Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. And welcome to Just Call Me Sarah. I am Annie T. Broughton, and I am so happy to be in your homes on this evening. And we're going to have a wonderful, awesome time on Just Call Me Sarah. I have some amazing guests with me on Just Call Me Sarah tonight. I, I tell you what, I met this, uh, this group of people maybe um, about six months ago, up to a year. And I, I, I just fell in love with them because they, they love God and, and they are true disciples of God. And they are none other than the Blankenships. And I tell you, I'm super excited, super blessed <laughs> to have them with me on, on Just Call Me Sarah. But before I introduce them to you tonight, uh, I do have a scripture that I want to read for your hearing. And it's lifted from Isaiah 41 and 10. And it reads, fear, not, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. I love that passage of scripture because I have used it so, so, so many times in my life when I have gone through storms and, and struggles in my life. I always turn to that scripture and I say, God, you said you was going to help me, and he helps me every time. Well, I want to introduce you all to a uh, an awesome man of God, his daughter, amen, and this other young man that sings with them, the Blankenships. So Eric is the leader of it. So hi, Eric. <laughs> you feel like a superhero there for a moment. Uh, man, we're just blessed to be here with you. You're such an anointed woman of God, and uh, we love you as much as you love us. Uh, I'll tell you, when I met you all, has it, has it, it hasn't been a year, has it? It's been like six months. About maybe six two? months. Yeah. But when you, when you have a family, like there's no distance in time, you know, like time don't even matter. Exactly. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's something that we noticed right off the bat. Uh, we were actually singing, and I think I even told you, I looked across uh, where you were sitting, and you could just see the joy of the Lord uh, God. on your face. And, you know, and that's what it's about. We had church. <laughs> we had and, church. Uh, TV or not, we had church we here had in the building. Church. <laughs> Uh, and uh, we just we love it here. We love everybody here, and you guys are such a blessing to more than you probably ever know. Praise God! And this is your beautiful daughter, Caitlin. Hi, Caitlin. Hi. It's nice to be back. <laughs> <laughs> I am so happy to see you tonight. And you always you just a pretty little girl, you know, young Thank lady, you. not a little girl, but a young lady, so beautiful. Well, same for yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Anthony, Hi. Anthony Lovejoy. I love your last name. Thank you. <laughs> That last name fits you. It's, it fits your personality. Amen. So how you doing? I'm blessed. <laughs> You're blessed? Yes. Amen. Blessed to still be able to do what I love doing with my best friend. and Yeah, singing he, and praising God. And he, he just got in trouble. He left Carson out of that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, because Carson's not with you all. No, oh and we God. miss him here. barely. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, it seems so odd to go in and do a, you know a sound check or even traveling and not have him with us because he is such a, a big part yeah. of our family and our group and our ministry, and uh, God just sent him. So we're we're just blessed and we miss him dearly when he is not here. Yeah. So Eric, tell me what has God done for you? What, is, what has he been doing since I last saw you all? Well, since you last seen us. Um, I know you've seen our shirts, the But God t-shirts. Yeah. And uh, that song took on a little more meaning uh, after we left you guys. Um, I ended up having some issues with my foot. Mm -hmm. And I went into the doctor. And when I first got there, they sent me up to the cardiovascular lab. Yeah. And they took um, different tests. And they found a clot on the top of my foot. Yeah. And... Uh, I just, I went back down and they sent me back to the waiting room rather than putting me in a room, mm -hmm. which was odd. Yeah. But they had kept, they kept coming in and doing test after test after test. And I thought, man, that's odd. And then they sent me back to the waiting room. Well, next thing I know, the physician's assistant had um, came down and told me, so, well, Mr. Blankenship, you can go home. Wow. And I, I was sort of lost because, you know, a person with a clot, they yeah. don't send home. Right. Um, and I 
waited because she told me to wait on my discharge papers. And the next thing I know, the overall doctor of the ER came out. And she said, Eric, I want you to come over here. I want to show you something. Mm -hmm. So she went, took me over and she showed me the results and things in my tests. And she said, you're going to think that I'm absolutely nuts. She said, because in the first one, here's the clot on the top of your foot. Right. In the other three, that clot's not there. And she said, I can't explain it. <laughs> and it just so happens that I was wearing the but God shirt. But God. And I looked her square in the eyes. And I said, you know what? I do. Yes. And I held that shirt up. But yes. God. Yes. Because even before I went to the doctor, even before any test was run, yes. even before the first pain in my foot, yes. God was on the scene. Yes. And God took care of it. God. Not any type of medical. God took care of it. Oh, my God. Um, God worked a miracle Amen. for you in just a short span of time. Amen. Just I tell you, there's no, there's no distance with God. No, He'll move anytime, anywhere, anyhow. Absolutely. You know, and he, I think he wants to amaze the doctors. I, like, I think he <laughs> likes to show up and chill yeah. out. <laughs> and uh, that's what we love about your program. Yeah. Is, you know, anytime that you watch this program, mm. and uh, this is any program. I'm, yeah. I'm not just plugging her, folks. <laughs> I encourage you. Plug me. Go ahead and plug me. <laughs> I encourage you. Watch. If you can't catch it live, catch it on Facebook. Praise catch God. it on the website. This this show will not disappoint you, whether it be Praise Nightline God. or just call me Sarah. Yeah. These programs are touching more lives Thank you, Jesus. than we are probably ever aware of. Thank you, Lord. Uh, I can speak for, you know, a homeless person yes. at my work seeing your program yes and at the end of that program yes ask to pray oh my god you know folks this is what it's about this is what it's about and the anointing on your broadcast thank you jesus is just it's unbelievable thank you lord god because what you're saying to me is because i don't want this just to be another show on television if we can't be effective that's exactly right <laughs> it, it's sort of one of those things that you know you can go in and you can you can sing and it can be beautiful you can speak and it can be elegant but without the anointing without the anointing, that's all it is <laughs> say it's not anointed it's annoying then yeah exactly <laughs> exactly it's just it's yeah. just there Mm -hmm. And it sits dormant and dead. And this program, by far, and I've watched many programs, whether it be on TBN or, you know, uh, Dove Broadcasting or whatever. This program absolutely stirs my soul each and every time. And that's special because you don't get that. And that's the same way, that's the exact way that I feel about you all. When I, when I hear you sing, when I hear you minister, I know that you're ministering from the heart, that God has really spoke to you, that he's, he's aligning the songs up, what he wants you to sing, and Absolutely. how he wants you to minister. And for you all to come and travel all the way from Charleston, right? Charleston, West yeah. Virginia. To come and to just share the love of God that's phenomenal to me. That's a blessing to me. We, we wouldn't be any other place. <laughs> so, Caitlin, how are you, sweetheart? I'm doing good. <laughs> good. Yeah. So, how you? So, are you homeschooling? Yeah, because of the outbreak, of course. But mm -hmm. um, I'm going into ninth grade now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Driving her daddy crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm learning the new website and stuff. It's different. To say the least. Yeah, well, you probably can come and teach me some stuff when you. <laughs> <laughs> we got to teach her first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is awesome. Um, so, Anthony, what you been up to? Blessed, working every day, taking care of residents. Just love seeing the smiles in their faces because they don't have 
family coming in right now due to the outbreak. Yeah. So right. Getting to share stories with them, them talking with us. But well, Anthony, how how is it? Because I know you are a CNA, right? Yes. So how how do you handle that when the families don't get to come in and see the we, patients? They ask us all the time. The, the residents ask us all the time. We do are, are able to like do video chats with them. I know yesterday I had a lady ask me if if she could call her daughter. I was like, yes. I grabbed my cell phone out and. We are have stuff set up to where they can still like talk to them. They just can't be right there. Yeah. And we're still having like church services that, and then we still play CDs and everything, games, everything with them. So you basically, you guys are just stepping up. Yeah. And, stepping and sort of being family. Yeah, being family. Wow. See, you are Earth Angel. <laughs> God sent you to be right where you are. Oh my God, well, right now we're getting ready to listen to you all. Uh, the blanket ships are getting ready to sing, but God, amen, praise God. <laughs> or something has occurred we began to pray believing we are heard doctors say prepare for the worst but God was first on the scene Wow, that was the Blankenship singing, but God. And, you know, that's a testimony in itself, that song, the words to the song. And somebody needs to hear 
that tonight because I know that you're going through something. We all are, but God. Eric, tell me how did the Holy Spirit give you the words to that song? Oh, Lord. Um, that song actually came about. We were um, at Fanfare in Somerset, Kentucky, and there was a group that sang that song. And I loved the song, but I, it never really, I guess, resonated with me until I got home. And I began to, you know, just sort of ponder and pray. and Because yeah. I love it first thing in the morning because yeah. it's quiet. The yeah. kids are asleep. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm able to just focus on the Lord. Yeah. And I began to, to really think about back in 2000 and, uh, 2012, um, my youngest son was born. And um, two weeks following that, uh, I had a massive heart attack. Wow. And uh, I don't know how many is familiar with wow. the term, you know, widowmaker heart attack. Yeah. But that was my first one. Yeah. Uh, I had 100% blockage in the main arteries of my heart and went three days at home with it. Uh, I just I, Before you realized it, you was... No, I was having symptoms, but okay. uh, I was, you know, giving credit to those to my diabetes because, ironically, okay. your heart, and when your diabetes acts up to a degree and it's okay. so high, they can feel the same. See, I didn't know that. I didn't either, and <laughs> a gallbladder can do the same thing as well. A gallbladder can give you the same effect as a heart attack, same symptoms. Yeah. And um, I let it go for three days, and uh, ironically, three days. And that's yeah. well, I had a pastor tell me that. It's ironic. It's three days, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I was driving home when I even had the kids in the car, and I looked down at the lines on the road, and they began to move mm. and shake. And I thought, okay, I've got to get you know help. So I ended up driving, believe it or not, it was seven miles. As dizzy as I've ever been in my life. Yeah. But God directed that car. And he, I got to where my wife worked. And they took me in. They done the uh, heart calf. They found the blockage. And they went in and put a stent in my heart. And they had me on morphine. Yeah. So I was feeling pretty good at that point. <laughs> but... The doctor said, he looked down at me, he said, Eric, he said, you are extremely lucky to be alive. Wow. And he said, I looked at him and I smiled, just as pretty as a blanket chip can probably smile. <laughs> and I looked up and I said, you know, there's a huge difference in somebody being lucky and somebody being blessed. I don't remember saying one word, but this is the same doctor that refused every CD that I ever offered him. Yeah. After that, I went into the office for a follow-up. Yeah. And I was waiting in one of the rooms, and I heard our CD come over the loudspeaker. And he walked in the room, and I said, "Huh? Hey, you finally turned it on, didn't you? He said, well, it was either, you know, turn it on, come to know Jesus, <laughs> Or you was going to give me more CDs. I said, that's exactly right. So him and his wife both <laughs> got saved and now are avid listeners of our family. And the song, But God, fits that situation to an absolute T. Yeah. Because if it had not been for God. Tell it. I would not have been here. Tell it. If it had not been for God. Tell it. Directing that car. Tell it. To where it needed to go to my wife, yes. I wouldn't be here. Yes. If it hadn't been for God for protecting me, yes. and I know I'm probably hitting mm. the microphone. Jesus. But if it had not been for God for protecting me mm. Mm, 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 and mm. blessing me to be able to be here with my wife and my children. Thank you, Jesus. I wouldn't have been able to Thank continue you, the ministry that he's called Thank us to you, do. Jesus. It's so, so, so often we tend to overlook just how good God is. We wake up in the morning, and if we're blessed to be able to take a breath or look around and you see the flowers or hear the birds sing, folks, we're blessed as bad as this world is. If we're able to lift our head from that pillow of the morning, we are blessed. 
we need to give God glory each and every day of our lives that we're blessed to walk this earth and try to be a witness to anyone that we come in contact with. Um, Eric, one of my, I just got a phone call last night and one of my closest friends, sister, passed away. No, no. Yeah, she um, went to the hospital to have a stem cell transplant. She was there for two weeks and she was doing good but all of a sudden she started having atrial fib and when they did a test on a cardiac cath, they found that she had a blockage. And they tried to remove that one, but found that she had another one. Oh man. And she passed away. But even though she passed away, the Bible said to be absent from With this the body. body. <laughs> to be present with him, amen. <laughs> It's hard when you lose yeah. someone, but there's also joy in it. If you think of it through the spiritual eyes instead of the, you know, the natural eyes, there's joy because there's no more suffering. There's no more hurting, no more sickness. The Bible talks about getting a new body, and I, I know for a fact my papa got his brand new body. <laughs> And if I know my papa like I think I do, yeah. he was probably doing circles clean across the bridge over into heaven, I'd say. Um, he loved the Lord. And uh, we, matter of fact, there's a song that uh, we sing called Forever Home. Yeah. That um, it talks about that. And I love that song that you all sing too, I Want to Be That Man. I love that oh song. Oh, my God. I tell you, when y'all was on Nightline before and y'all sang that song, I thought, I I think I was going to be able to get through. You know, it was like. That was when I seen the glory of the Lord all over you. <laughs> yeah. It was like, okay, I know, I'm not okay. the only one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was great. Anthony, how do you, you know, deal with so much sickness and death around you all the time? How do you manage that? Just pray. I, every day before I go into work, I have my Bible right in my box. I grab it. Yeah. Um, every time I read, there's one verse that always sticks out. Isaiah 40, 31. They that wait upon the Lord. <laughs> and there's some days I can't get through without waiting on God. It's hard, but with God's help, I am get through it every single day. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, thank God we have such a good God again. Amen. <laughs> you know, that loves us and helps us to go through because that's one of the reasons why I read that scripture from Isaiah 41 and 10 where he says, fear not. Amen. I'm with you. I'm going to strengthen you. I'm going to help you. Absolutely. I'm going to uphold you with my victorious right hand. And I can see why God connected you all together because y'all have kindred spirits and the, the anointing of God, the power of God, the presence of God is on your life. And what God is doing in you all and through you all, he couldn't have just put anybody with you. I agree. You know? <laughs> I agree. That's why, you oh know, I mean, we're family. Yeah. Uh, and any time that somebody asks, whether it be Anthony or Carson, to ask, are you guys brothers? Yeah. Yes, we are. Yeah. Um, granted, there's times I don't claim you. No, I'm playing. Yeah. <laughs> um, God placed each and every person here. And, you know, for the longest time, it was me and Caitlin. Yep. And then out of nowhere, we find him at the nursing home. <laughs> That's torture. <laughs> granted, he was not a patient. Could have been if they had evaluated him. <laughs> I see no doubt being you. <laughs> but... We drag him up, sing with us. He starts singing, and then God added Carson. Wow. Well, Eric, 
we only got a couple more minutes on the program for Just Call Me Sarah. But if there's anything in your heart that you want to share for a couple of minutes, I want you to have at it. Lord, she's opening up a can of worms here. <laughs> i tell you what, you know, folks, if I could, I want to go back because I was doing my class work there uh, last night. And take each day to be a blessing yeah. to someone. Yeah. Don't allow yourself to become stagnant and complacent. Wow. There is people outside your door, whether they be neighbors, yeah. passerbys, or even homeless. And believe you me, there is homeless out there. I talk to them daily. Yeah. Reach your hand out because the only way that we can pick someone up yeah. is if we reach out a hand. My God, my God. And I, that's just how good God is. When we make that first step, he meets us. Yeah. And he gives us that guidance on what we need to do, what we need to say. Yeah. I can, uh, I could sit and listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> we feel the same about All you. All day and, and, and can't, uh, Carson, I hate telling about Carson, right? Yeah. Tell him I missed him, okay? And we'll, leave. No, no, we'll tell him. <laughs> Caitlin, thank you for coming today, sweetheart. And Anthony, God bless you. You are awesome. You're a man of God. And I tell you, God has such a great future and blessing for each one of you. And I can't wait to be a part of it. Absolutely. We want you a part of it. <laughs> I want to thank you all for tuning in to uh, Just Call Me Sarah tonight. I want to thank you for just you know, listening to this awesome testimony that Eric gave tonight. So if you are going through anything at all, when you pray or when it, whatever comes against you to say, but God, but God, we're closing up. Eric, pray for us. Well, we will close up, but go ahead and pray. Father God, we come before you tonight, Lord. We thank, thank you, you for the anointing that we feel. Father, we thank you for the, the company that you yes, gave us tonight, God. Lord, we pray that if anyone is going through something in their life, we pray that you move on that tonight. God, we thank you for the glory that you placed, the blessings, the trials, whatever the case may be. Father, we give you glory because we know in the end of it all, you've got control. Father, in your name we pray. Amen. Amen.